everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got this shaker card that I'm going to show you how I made. Um, I've had a lot of um, requests, I had quite a few comments and messages to do a tutorial for this card after I showed it on my Facebook page at the beginning of the week. So um, I have actually been you know, planning to do a shaker card tutorial. Um, so with this one being as popular as it's been, this seemed the perfect one to show you. So this is using, at the moment, my stamps of the moment. I just adore these unicorn stamps. So I'll talk you through that in a minute, but if I just bring it up closer, you can see this gorgeous shaker card full of sequins, which all move really freely around the card. I maybe possibly put too many in there, but well, you can never have too many sequins really, can you? So. You can see that it all moves around and inside here, heat embossed underneath, I've got this lovely sentiment which is from the same stamp set. Um, and then I've just fussy cut and coloured and put glitter on the unicorns and on the horn and on the cloud. And then I've just stuck some more little sequins um, along here as well. And one has just literally come off. I'll probably rub that too hard. I'll stick that one back down. But there you go. So that's what I'm going to show you how to make today. So I'm just going to pop that one up there. So I'm going to use pink um, tones today because that's more purpley. But this is the stamp set that I've been using. And it's a new stamp range um, called Crafty Panda by Hobby Base UK. Um, and as a lot of you know, I'm part of the design team for Hobby Base, so I was really, really pleased to get these stamps and start creating with them. And um, I've I've got some really, really fun projects to come. And tomorrow um, is one that I'm really pleased with, so hopefully you'll like that one. Um, but yeah, you've got Have a Magical Day, you've got Your Magical Rainbow, the star with the rainbow, unicorn head, the full unicorn, and another little cloud down here. I have used them to death and already they are, um, they need a good clean. I do clean my stamps, but these need a proper deep clean, I would say. So that's the stamps. I'll share all the links in the description box below. So let's grab all of our base um, pieces first. So the card mat that I'm using is an A6 size, so four and a half by six and a half. Then the mat on top is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. So it sits on top and it gives you a nice little frame around the edge there. Okay, and then we will be cutting that and I will show you how to cut that. So that's the, the kind of, just the two, um, the, the card base and the mat that you need. Then I went ahead and I've already prepared some of my stamps because you don't need to watch me colour all of them, but I'm going to do one on camera now. So on the top here, I've got the head and the cloud. So what I've done is I've used my um, my favourite watercolour pencils, which I'll show in a moment, um, and then I've added the glitter. I've only put the glitter on one cloud because the other side is going to be sat behind the head of the unicorn there. Um, but you can see I've just put the glitter there and on the horn as well. So that's going to go in the top left of the card. And then I'm going to do stamp this one now and just show you quickly how I um, colour. So I've got some watercolour um, card here. Um, you do need a good, a very thick GSM, a heavyweight card or watercolour card when you use watercolour pencils or any watercolour pens because it needs to be able to absorb that water and not... Um, obviously warp and um, and wrinkle and roll, um, which a thin card would do. So just make sure that you do have something of quality um, card when you're using watercolours. Um, so I'm using stays on again, make sure you use a um, water friendly ink because you don't want your images to bleed. So stays on is perfect for any watercolour, um, water based um, pens and things like that. So I'm going to use the, the big unicorn here because I need to do this um, one as I mentioned. So just grab that one first and just get this one inked up. With the stays on, you always want to, because it's a, it's a um, material um, ink pad, so you just want to rub your, your stamp over it first and kind of get it all covered and then dab it and you'll get the full coverage on your stamp. Again, if you want to use a stamp positioner, um, if you're worried that you may not get a good first impression, I've been using this a lot with this card, so I know that it will take okay. I'm gonna go down in the corner here just so I can save the rest of my card there. Make sure I don't get any more on there. I'm just holding it in place just so that the um, card absorbs as much of that, of that ink as possible. Just realize I'm not in view there. There we go, that's a bit better. And then we can just take that off and I get a really nice impression. I'll just bring that up there just so you can see how it looks 
without anything coloured in. So again, these are really clean images, perfect for colouring, um, you know, blending and doing all that kind of thing. Um, I've mentioned before that I'm not, um, I'm like obsessed with how people use the Copic markers and the alcohol markers and I, I, it's amazing, you know, some of the, the images that are produced, but I'm just no good with alcohol. Um, well, I like a drink, but I mean alcohol markers. Um, so I find watercolour is perfect for me because it kind of covers a lot of errors. It's very easy to kind of, you know, get rid of your mistakes. So that's why I love it. So I'm just going to cut this out just so I haven't got this massive piece of card. There we go. And then the pencils I'm using are, I'll just grab here. I haven't got the box anymore because I've had these quite a while. Um, but they are by Reeves. I'll share the links and they are inexpensive. These are not ex really expensive ones. I get these from the range. For a pack of 12, it's 2 99 and I think 4 99 or 5 99 for a pack of 24. Um, but again, I'll share all those links. You can get them on eBay, Amazon and stuff like that. But it just says at the bottom there, it says Reeves. And they are beautiful. They're really creamy and they blend perfectly. So I've just picked out the colourways that I'm using there. And very easily, very quickly, all I'm doing is imagining that the sunlight or the light is coming from the, this kind of top right hand side. So it's hitting this side of the unicorn, which then means that all of this side would be in a shadow. It would have a darker colour. So that's why all I'm doing is going around the line of the unicorn, the outline here, just a little bit on the legs, the end of the ear, do a little bit under the belly, and then again down on these bits here. Okay, so that's all I'm doing there. Then I'm going to do the same with the pink. So again, I'm going to do the outer um, part of the hair there, and again there. Come down like so, and then I'm doing the inside line of the tail all the way around there. Just really kind of go quite heavy there with that pencil. And then I've got a little bit of yellow on the horn, yellow on the star, missed his ear there as well, do a little bit of blue there, oh, and do a little bit of blue under the face, miss that bit, like so. And then with the grey, just doing the left hand side of the hooves there, his little feet like so. So I mean that was really really quick, that is literally all I do. Now the good thing with watercolour is you can build up, once it's dried you can build up again and you know go you know intensify the colours even more. Now also what I recommend is you use one of these um, water brushes. You can use a normal paintbrush and a little you know well of water that will work just as well. Um, also make sure you have some tissue at hand because you will need that to blot off any excess. Now the one thing I will say is when you use these don't ever squeeze them so the water comes out over your image. Always do it on some tissue so when I push this you won't be able to see it in the camera but it's got a little push on the sides there and it just one you can clean obviously the brush but also it just make sure you can get all the water there absorbed into the brush as well but just dab off any excess less is more you don't want to go in with tons of water you really don't need it especially when you're doing a little image like this and then basically all I'm doing is just starting to rub over that blue that I done just kind of get it nice and wet and already I can see it starting to move and then all I'm doing then is starting to pull out that blue into the image so as you can see there and again on the legs I'm just pulling it out and then if I just blot it off I can pick up any more water on there so if there's too much water blot it off in your tissue and then go back into your image and pick up that water because it will grab onto the end of that brush and again go around the bottom of his face and just bring that colour into the image so you're getting a really really light colour blue and you're just keeping that shadow and that shade where you originally um, drew it all in. So again, just bringing it up there around the star. And again on his back leg and on that inside leg, like so. And then again, do the same. So I'm just going to now squeeze the water back through the brush, just to kind of clean it off a bit and then go into the pink. And again, working from the inside out, I'm just pulling that pink colour there and then you can kind of just brush over it and just keep working with it because it's obviously water it's moving all the time so you've got time to um, and even if it dries 
oh gosh my light's really dipped then even if it dries out um, just add more water again you can see there and then again just go to the top of the head like so and then just all the time I'm working from the outside in just pulling that colour inside like so I'm quite pleased with that now while that's drying then if I decide I want to go back again and you know make it even darker I can do just going to put a little bit there as well just blend out that grey that I put onto the feet like so if I just bring that up now to the camera you can see how quickly that was to do so I might go back over and do the blue there just to give it a bit more of a deeper shadow I'm quite happy with the tail and the hair but that's how I do it really easy um, so like I said uh, I'm going to let that dry and then go back to it in a minute and then we can add the glitter on there as well so whilst that's drying and before I'm going to fussy cut it and everything let's um, sort out our frame and do some heat embossing with our sentiment so here's the frame and then what I've done is I've used my trimmer to cut out the inside so I've done a three quarters of an inch um, uh, frame this is all three quarters of an inch. So basically, um, grab my trimmer. And with this particular trimmer here, it's got the measurements down the side here, although this is my mum's one and it's in centimetres and I obviously work in inches. So I've got inches and centimetres along the top, but then they only give you centimetres along the side, which is a little bit annoying. Why can't they put inches on this bit here? Anyway, what you want to do is pop your card in and on this side here, it's got one inch. So I just need to bring that down to one and a quarter, and then I know that that'd be a three quarter inch um, frame. What you can also do, which might be a bit easier to explain, is let me just grab a pencil. I'm just gonna show you with a pen and a, um, with a pencil and a ruler. But also if you've got a die, a rectangle die, which will give you a nice um, frame here, then use that. That's obviously the, the really easiest way of doing it. But um, I haven't got one that was the right shape that I wanted. So all I'm going to do is come in at three quarters of an inch from one side, just lightly with a pencil, and then three quarters of an inch from the top here. Put a little cross so I know now that's three quarters of an inch. So I can just come all the way along and do the same. If I come in, here we are at six, so I can come in at five and a quarter like so. My card might be slightly smaller to what I said it was because I think I did cut it wrong at the beginning but you need to follow the measurements I said which was six and a half by four and a half card base and then six and a quarter by four and a quarter mat which is what this will be for you guys. And then again I'll just come down here so I'm just constantly just bringing it in constantly it doesn't make sense does it? Just bringing it in at three quarters. Okay so I've just pointed, uh, pointed I've just done little markers there it's about there actually um, and then what you can do is poke a hole in the middle and then cut out if you want, if you're using your scissors, if you don't have your trimmer. Like I said, use a die if that's um, even easier. Um, but all I'm going to do now is with this particular trimmer, it's got this metal um, piece of um, wire that runs down the middle. So you just make sure that you've got that lined up over your two pointers. So I can see it's right over there. And then with this one here, it's got a marker in the middle here. So if I just hold this up towards me, I can just place that down right over the top and then cut down to where I need it to be, like so. If I remove that, you can see now I've just cut from that point down to that point. So I'm just going to pop it back in again here and start from, again I need to hold it out this way so I can see without putting my head in the camera. Push that down and then come down like so. So again, and then rotate and just repeat that on the other two sides. So that's now just fallen out and that's given me the frame that I need. But like I said, if you've got a die, nice rectangle die that you're happy with for that, then you can just use that. Now I'm just going to rub out those little marks. Okay, so now I've got my frame. So that is going to sit nicely over the top like so. Then you need a piece of acetate, which I did have here, make sure I don't lose it. So your piece of acetate needs to come in at about six by four, okay? Um, you wanna make sure that it sits over your back of your frame here, 
but not over the, over that again. Okay, so it needs to sit on the back there within that frame. So then what we can do is grab some of this red tape. This is just really good for acetate. It's, it, you know, it sticks to it really well. But any other good um, double-sided tapes will work as well. This is just what I prefer to use. And you just want to go around that piece of acetate and make sure you stick it right up to the edge of the acetate. So this is the edge here. You can see where I've stuck it. And again, just go around the other side. Okay, so I've just covered my acetate there with that tape. And then you just want to take all your um, backing off. And then you're just going to stick that onto the back of your frame. So just make sure that it covers it evenly, like so. Just make sure that's all stuck down really nicely. There comes the sun again now. Went really dark just then. Okay, so now that is my window of my shaker card already. Okay, so the next bit we need to do now is the foam backing. I think this is where a lot of people get um, you know, kind of get a bit scared with shaker cards and um, maybe this is where they get put off by doing them. But I hope I've got a way to show you that um, will make it easier. So what I use is you can buy the very, very thin strips of foam tape for shaker cards. Um, and I'm all for it, it's brilliant, but I do think it's quite pricey. So I like to find a um, a frugal way to um, to do my crafting where I can. So I find that if you use some greaseproof paper, this is the one that I've got here. This is grief Bruce, grease proof and baking paper. I'm not sure what it's called around other parts of the world, but basically you want the paper to have that greasy texture to it, so that when you stick any kind of tape to it, it peels off easily, just as if it was a backing on um, double-sided tape. Okay, so that's what you want. It's got to have that grease, that shiny um, finish to it. And basically what I've got here is a roll of this is just the normal, very, very cheap. I picked this up for a pound, um, just the double foam and uh, double sided foam roll. And then what you want to do is just stick it down on your grease proof paper. When you cut it, make sure you cut over the top when it's down on the greaseproof paper and it will then mean that you don't get any sticky residue on your scissors. They're still perfect. Okay. Now, depending on the, how thick your foam is, this is quite a thick foam and it's perfect to just have one layer if the sequins you're using are flat, completely flat. Um, but the sequins I'm using are these kind of standard, really popular ones that most of us crafters use. And they're, they're slightly raised, you know, they're not completely flat. Now, for that reason, what I want to do is make a double layer of my foam. So I'm just going to remove the backing on this here. I need my it's a bit easier. Easy I'm just going to grab this and just take off the backing there. And then with your roll of tape again, sit it directly on top and just stick it down. And that will give you a double layer. And again, I'm cutting it over the top. Okay. So we'll put that to one side. So now I've got double layers of foam. So I've got a really deep, almost like a quarter of an inch kind of well that that's going to create with the height now that I've got on that foam. Then what you want to do, just to make it a bit thinner, because I don't need it as thick as this, is I'm going to just cut this excess off just so I haven't got so much in my way. Cut down here as well, like so. And then what I'm going to do is cut it in half again. So again, this will not ruin my scissors. It makes it so easy to cut this foam, like so. Now, when I made um, a shaker card on my Facebook Live, um, hobby base um, page um, on last the Monday just gone. Um, I made a circle shaker card and I showed how to use this um, and wrap this foam around a circular um, shape. So it's perfect for any shape um, when you cut it thin like this. So there you go. So now I've got four thin strips of foam. So it's going to make now putting my um, shake a card together very easy. So now I'm going to grab one of these and just remove the backing, so the greaseproof paper. I'm going to use the other end actually because that's got an extra piece from when I 
cut it earlier. And then what you want to do is don't bring it right down to the edge of the inside of the frame because you, you see it basically and it doesn't make it necessarily that pleasing on the eye. So you can't really see here but I've actually stuck it you know more in the middle I guess. So like so, I probably could have gone, let me just peel that off a bit there, start out here, there we go. And I'm just going to stick it like so. And again, keeping that grease proof backing always behind when you cut. So I'm just going to cut that off like so. Okay, so I've put the top piece on. And then again, along here, just keeping it in the middle. Kind of get it to the same length as the one above. Again, keeping that grease proof always behind my scissors. Never cut it without it, because otherwise you will then get your scissors ruined and covered in all this sticky goo. And then just do the side pieces, and this is what is key with shaker cards, is making sure you get a perfect seal. You don't want any of those sequins falling out. So again, I'm just popping that right in there so it meets up with both of them. Again, lie that grease proof paper back down behind it, like so. I've got a little gap there, but the sequins won't fit through that, so that's okay. But if you had some of those sequins come with those little tiny, tiny, um, almost like beads inside as well, then you'll want to make sure you get it completely closed off. Again, just sit that inside, like so. Okay, so now you can see that's my backing already. So now when that sits over my card, if I just bring that up, you can see how much it's lifted off, but it's also nice and clean and neat. And if anybody was to inspect your card and start looking in everywhere, they would see that that's really done nicely. Okay, so that's the foam done. Then we want to do some heat embossing first on this. Now, if you want to do your sentiment on the outside, you can just stamp your image, die cut it or fussy cut it and stick it on the outside, that's fine. But I wanted to put mine inside. So I've got this here. I know I've got these are going to be up here and then this one's going to be down here. So the sentiment I'm using is going to be the same one again, have a magical day. So it's a nice birthday card. And if I just, I haven't fussy cut this yet, I'm just going to roughly just go a bit closer on that side there just so I can see where that's going to be. So I'm going to have my stamp, possibly, let's do a little bit, how's that looking there? Yeah, I think that's going to be fine because that's going to be up there and then you can see that nicely. Okay, so just play around and start. I always like to position everything um, before I stick it down and, you know, check I'm happy with how it's all going to look. So I'm, I'm okay with that. And then what I can do is lift... Oh, it's stuck to my... Uh, that's quite a good idea there. It's just stuck a, a little bit to the uh, acetate. But I'm just going to lift up and just put a little pencil mark. Yeah. Just roughly, just a light pencil mark there and I can rub that out afterwards. Now I'm going to heat emboss this one. Again, you don't have to heat emboss it, but I do like doing my heat embossing. So I'm just going to grab my block. I'm going to grab my anti-static powder and just rub it over because you don't want anything sticking to any other part of the card. Just get that all done. And then I'm just using, again, I'm at my mum's crafting, so it's crafting on tour. So it's, you'll see a lot of the bits I'm using are very different to what I usually use, but still all work. So I'm just going to ink this up with some Versamark, which is your watermark ink. So it's just clear. Get that all nice and absorbed. Okay, and then just sit that down like so. Again, just make sure it absorbs. I always like to keep my stamp stamped down just for a few seconds, just to make sure that it does get absorbed by the card. And then lift it up and you can see there, it just, you can see there how it just um, watermarks. So you can see now where you need to sprinkle your powder. So I'm using the Nouveau um, gray, no silver, sorry, embossing powder. So I've got that one there. Just use that bit of card just to catch any of the excess. And then I'm just gonna sprinkle this over tap off any excess. I'm going to do a little bit more. I can rub out that cross afterwards. don't want to do it before otherwise you'll ruin your image. I think I'm happy. Probably get a little bit more on there. Go over it again. If you just kind of hold it up like that and move it and it will really stick. There we go. 
much better. And then what you can do is if you've got any extra little bits, just grab a paintbrush and just kind of brush them off. There's hardly anything there, but and the sequins are going to cover most of this anyway. But there we go. Right, let's just pop this all so back. Now I just pot. need to heat set. So I've got the um, heat gun here. Just get it nice and hot first. That's the key to heat embossing. So I'm just holding my hand here until it's unbearable, which it is. And then I can just go over in circular motions and just get that all nicely set. And you'll see it take like it is now. such a pretty sentiment this one I really like it there you go you can see it have a magical day okay now obviously my card is slightly warped a bit there you can heat it from this side if you want but while it's still warm I just tend to roll mine like so and it will put it back into shape and what you can also do is sandwich it between some copy paper and then run it through your dye machine and that will flatten it as well the reason I say put it through the copy paper on top is because if you've got any kind of um impressions on your plates they can um, show the patterns up on your paper and you don't want that to happen so that's kind of flat again now now let's just rub out that cross like so okay so what we need to do now is that's going to stick on top like so Okay, so we can see that that's all where we need it to be. So now we want to put our sequins inside of it. So I'm just using these ones here, which I picked up from the local craft shop. And I want to have these real pinky, almost like dust, dusty kind of pink colour. Um, now these are great little tubs. However, they, they don't make it easy for you to actually take, like kind of tip the sequins out. So I'm just going to get a scrap card here. I'm going to put it over the two sides. When I'm at home in my craft room, I have them all in drawers, but this is obviously, again, I'm in my mum's, but if I hold it like that, then I can just tip them out. And what I'm doing is I'm tipping them onto the card, not into the acetate window, like so. And I know that if I tip it in the middle there, it's not going to um, affect me sticking this on top in a minute. So just keep it all nicely centered there, okay? And then with this, before we stick it down, just another little tip to stop the sequins sticking to the side. You kind of, they always kind of will, but to stop loads is I'm just using the powder residue from my anti-static buddy here at the bottom, just on my toothbrush, um, toothbrush, just on my brush, and just go along the side of this foam and just rub it over and it will just remove, well, it will stick to the stickiness there, but it will stop will prevent some of the sequins sticking there even more. So just go around the inside there. And it's just doing all these little extra kind of tips that just make your shaker card a little bit easier to put together and get a nicer final result. You can also rub your finger around there just to you know feel if there's anything sticky. And then just only where the, the acetate's showing, just with a bit of tissue, just rub back over just so you remove any of that powder just so it doesn't again kind of interfere with this so now we can take the backing off of this here okay, so I've removed all that backing and then very carefully with your card with the sequins on top you're going to sit this over the top here making sure that you've got a nice even frame and then stick that down like so and then you can move all the sequins around like so Oh, look. Oh, no, look. I've got one random... <laughs> There's one that's made its way in there and it's not the same colour. Oh, my gosh. What are the odds of that happening? Maybe you can't pick it up there. Can you see it? It's like trying to find it now. It's disappeared. But if you move them around... There you go, you can see. And there's not that many of them sticking. There's a clump there, but I think that's because they've all kind of built up on top of each other. But none of them are staying. There you go. See, they've all moved. But they all move really freely. There it is. Oh, just spotted it again. Damn it. Anyway, so that's the shake a bit done. So now obviously you can decorate it however you want. So I've got these two pieces ready here and they are going to go up in the top like so. And then this one here is going to go down in the bottom. So now I need to fussy cut it. Now you need good scissors to fussy cut. You want a small, easy to hold. These are by X cuts. These are pre precision ones. They've got a really fine tip on the end um, and they're a carbon um, carbon one I think yeah um, and the, the key the kind of tips for me is first of all is remove 
all the excess card as much as possible. Now I do want a little white border around this so I can get you know as close as I can. Just remove the excess, you don't want all that in the way. And then with fussy cutting is I never move this hand with my scissors in. So if you watch, all I'm moving is the paper. This hand doesn't move, this one does. And that is kind of key, it's just staying in control and making sure, obviously I move it when I've got to move the scissors up, but it's my left hand that's always moving. And that's, again, I guess the main two tips, cut away all the excess and then just, just concentrate on your left hand. Um, and that will make fussy cutting that a little bit more easier. This is not a bad image to cut. Um, so obviously that helps as well. Um, I don't tend to do really intricate ones because it's very hard to get them all exact, especially if you're doing multiple um, images, you know, cutting lots of them out. So I'm just trying to make sure I keep that white border as simple as I can. And then when you come to anything like this, where there's like points, go from the outside in. So I'm coming from the outside down, and then here I'm coming from the outside down, and then again, and I'm always moving my left hand, the actual one with the scissors. Is not the one that's doing the work. But again, when you're doing detailed bits like this, always start from the outside in, like so, and then I can just remove that bit there, and then go back into it and start carrying around. So I'm just going to finish this one off. Okay, so there you go, that's all cut out. Just as good as any die cutting machine, just a little bit longer. So. I'm happy with that. Now I need to stick these down. So that one is going to go here and that one there. Oh, also with the sequins, that's what I forgot, not the sequins, the glitter. That's what else I wanted to show. Um, where does so I what I'm going to do is, I don't need the whole card on there, just that bit. So I want to run some glitter along the tail here. What I use is this Stamping Up um, Fine Tip Glue Pen and it's a perfect um, uh, glue for precision. Um, gluing because it's got this fine metal tip so it just means that I can go right in here and just do really detailed um, you know uh, work so I'm just going to run some glue just on the inside of the tail where that kind of dark shading is and then this is just normal glitter just kind of kids craft glitter you can pick this up very cheap you should get like a pack of five or something and then I'm just going to sprinkle that over the top like so sit it like so and then kind of roll it over and then just tap off any excess like so again grab a brush just to get rid of all the other little bits you could use um, a um, what you call it a, a watermark pen and then use embossing powder you don't have to use glitter but I just this is just really nice and again it's just another inexpensive way you don't always have to have really expensive um, materials but now you can see the glitter there on the tail which looks really cute so Bearing in mind that's still a little bit wet, we can stick this all down. So I'm just using some tacky glue here and you could put it on foam but obviously this is already quite raised and this, if you're posting it that may not be the best thing to keep making it more um, thick so it doesn't fit in your envelope. So I'm just sticking this one underneath like so and then that's going to go up in the top like that. So I'm just going to stick a little bit more over the rest now. Okay, and then I can just stick this one down on this corner okay, here. So now you can see that's all stuck down there. And then I'm just going to finish it off with some little sequins just down in the left hand side here. So just the same ones. I'm just and there you go. There. So that one is now all finished. So I've got a few little sequins there. See, they all move around. We've got some. We've got a stray purple one in there, but that's okay. Um, I think they're really, really fun cards. So there you have it, and really quite easy. It's just that prep, it's just getting the foam and all that kind of, you know, under, underneath bit all in place. And if you do those little tips with the anti-static powder and stuff, you get your sequins really, you know, kind of moving freely there as well. So yeah, really, really love these cards. So there you have it. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Oh, I need to stick that sequin on, that was the one that fell off before. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Please hit the like button if you did and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching, bye.